so 2021 happy new year to you and you know this month has just flown by the year is i don't know moving like even quicker than 2020 anyway here are my january favorites so first up we have this very fuzzy sweater um, i'm really loving this so this is from pull and bear and it's been perfect for the rainy weather we've been having in january honestly it's been quite crazy i guess this is the effect of global warming but it's been actually cold in singapore i think many people wouldn't believe uh, when you say singapore is cold i'm actually quite bad with cold so maybe i'm slightly more extreme so anyway all my sweaters have come up to play and this is one of the newer ones that i have it's from pull and bear and i got it at like a super discount <laughs> which is great, always like discounts. So yeah, one of my favorites for January. Another one of my favorites are these Jeannie Richard earrings. So these are from a local label, which is Jeannie Richard's uh, jewelry. And they are so pretty, like I've gotten compliments every time I've worn them. The other ones that I really like are these. Um, there's a gold little um, irregular shaped ball at one end and a pearl at the other end. I'm just a little bit sad because I lost one of the pearls to one of the sides, so that was kind of like my favorite pair of earrings for the entire, I would say December and January, but I can't show you them. So these are the second favorite. So thank you very much to Jeannie and Richard Jewelry. Okay, still on this cold weather favorite. So another thing that I've been loving in January is this, I guess you can call it like a kaftan, a kaftan, a cover up, whatever you want to call it. And it's kind of posh because you can see, look at the label. It's by this brand Toshi, it's made in Italy and it was a present from one of my friends Mel who gave me this for Christmas I think as I get older I appreciate more and more like practical gifts that I can use um, I think previously I would prefer like really pretty things Okay, that said, jewellery is always still high on the list um, but this is something that I have found really really useful so it absorbs the water really quickly and then it keeps you dry for longer plus it's actually not very translucent so if I manage to keep this dry enough I actually just get out of the water um, get out of my swimsuit and I just wear this home for the car ride home uh, after wakeboarding so this is one of the things that has kept me warm um, definitely one of my favorite new things for January that and my thermal swimsuit but I got that previously from two other friends and that was from another month so this is the addition for January still on practical gifts uh, this was a personalized towel from a friend of mine, The. Um, so I think everyone, you know, with this group of friends, we all realize that we can kind of, we're lucky enough to be in a position where we can mostly buy whatever we need. So I really appreciate uh, that it's something useful. Again, I do a lot of sports, so towels are very useful. It's in a soft pink that I really love. And to have gone to the effort to embroider my name on it, thank you. Okay, so a new lip product that I'm loving in January is this Yves Rocher, is that how you pronounce it? Grand Rouge Le Elixir. I'm probably butchering it because it's in French. Uh, so this one I got from one of my friends. She actually, I think it was kind of like um, luck of the draw literally because she had all these little boxes and she asked us to just pick one. So I happened to pick this box which felt like a lip gloss or balm, I mean the size. Uh, and I really really like it. It's, I have it on right now. It's in the shade 102. Yep, 102. So it's kind of like um they don't have a name for the shade, just the number. 102. So it's kind of like a very rosy sort of nude, which is the kind of shade that I really like. Some can be a little too pink, and even more, I hate it when it's a little too nude. So this is the right sort of balance of pink and nude. It, it's like a liquid lipstick so it goes on as a liquid and then it dries down to a nice matte finish as you can see uh, it is long wearing enough I mean it's not like the kind of long wearing where it's gonna sit through everything but to me it's good enough uh, it feels comfortable on the lips I like the color definitely one of my new favorites for January <laughs> Another favorite of mine are these um, contact lenses from O Lens. So I I play around with different sort of contact lenses. Like I wear clear lenses. I've tried the those iris enhancing ones, which look really weird on me. I think it only works if your eyes are really big. Like I don't have really big eyes, so when I wear those, I look a bit like an alien, or like I'm super high on something, right? So these are um, in the Spanish range and the ones i got were in the shade real brown and these are the ones in real peach 
I find that I like these because it lightens my eyes with just a hint, uh, which kind of goes nicely with the faux blonde. Uh, but not, it doesn't actually enhance the size of the iris, which I prefer. You know, because I find that ring around it, um, like I said, it really depends for me if it's too, if the, if the diameter is too big. It just looks weird on me. So I really like this pair. It's actually pretty comfortable and it's because I was vain enough to want to try this color that I went back to wearing monthly lenses. Um, so I now toggle between I have monthly lenses and I also have daily lenses and depending on, on my mood or my outfit then I will change around but I think that I quite like uh, this range from Olens and I'm actually quite keen to try some of the other lenses as well. So I will share that in another video. Okay, and I actually managed to finish reading a book this month. It's Goodbye Things. It's kind of like uh, the Japanese art of minimalism and it's written by Fumio Sasaki, if I'm not wrong. So there is um, this guy, like he writes in a very simple to understand way. So he basically tells you a bit about how he was a maximalist before and he was quite unhappy because um, it was this pursuit of chasing things. And then he goes on to explain how he became a minimalist. I think he's quite extreme, but he encourages you to uh, just take it at your own pace. There's no need to get so extreme about it. I really enjoyed it because I found it really, really inspiring. Um, he also gives you like a list of tips. I think there were like 50 or 40 tips on how to start minimizing your life. And then there were additional tips for people who are like at the next level, which I definitely am not. So I've been quite... Uh, interested in a lot of minimalism content as you can see from my home from my personal style I'm not a minimal person like if I told if I tell my friends this I mean if they watch this they probably laugh at me but if I told any friend that I were, was um, wanting to become more minimal they would probably find it funny because it's not really my thing I've always said more is more but I don't know I feel like in 2020 I have um, come to appreciate that less is more for a lot of things and I've also realized that minimalism doesn't have to be like what Sasaki says you know even uh, the author um, says that you don't need to be as extreme as him like I think he he declutter his house of the television for example because he thought that was you know um, cluttering up his space but he says it looks different for everyone and so I've been consuming a lot of minimalism essentialism concepts in terms of books as well as videos and yeah, I'm beginning to see that it doesn't mean that you're, you need to have a really stark space. It doesn't mean that you can't wear things like with color or things with texture like this. Uh, it just means that you are doing away with all the extra stuff like excess fat. And I'm slowly, it's taking me a while because I have a lot of stuff, but slowly trying to get there. So I'll share a bit more about that with you in another video um, on stuff I've learned in 2020. Uh, if you haven't watched it, I will link it down below. Okay, and finally, um, I guess this is kind of like so cliche in line with the minimalism thing, but I'm really liking these pots. So I, I've never been a plant person, my plants have always died on me, but uh, after speaking to a few friends, I think it's kind of like a lot of people are into plants since the circuit breaker, then I've learned some things that I was doing wrong, for example, over watering, because I would just not water the plants for like maybe three weeks, because I forget, and then I would like go crazy, like, oh, they must be so parched, and then like, Shh like drench them in water and I realized like overwatering is actually even worse than underwatering so I've um, yeah I've taken to watering them less and also I was told that not all plants are made equal so now I have just one two three four five sort of plants and they all are like of the hardier variety that doesn't require so much care like this one don't ask me what I think it's a variation of the money plant I have a money plant I have two others which I will show you because i have no idea what names they are uh some i got some were gifts but um the pots i bought them all myself so these are from ikea so they're not very expensive but they're just simple and nice and yeah i'm quite pleased that the plants have stayed alive i hope they stay alive because i'll be a little bit sad if they, if they die but for now this is bringing me a lot of joy and the pots plus, plus the plants are some of my new favorites in january actually more the pots because i've had the plants a while I just had them in the ugly like planter pots. I didn't bother getting the decorative ones, so yeah. Okay, another favorite for the month of January are these devil fi devil fire spicy Korean noodles. So um, these are the ones that people have been doing all these challenges and 
uh, my friend Jules was like, how spicy can it be? Because he and I take quite a fair amount of spice. So he brought a couple of packets over to my house. We cooked it, we had it together. It is pretty spicy, man, I gotta say. Like, I usually add chili padi to my noodles. This one requires no chili padi. But it's actually the yummy sort of spicy. You know, there are some spicy things where... Like, I've tried like the ghost pepper noodles. Uh, I'll link that below as well. I don't know if you've watched that. So that one, when I ate it, I started to cry. Like, involuntarily, I started to tear. And it wasn't yummy, it was just really spicy, but it wasn't tasty. This one, we tried the soup and the dry version, and the soup version is actually really tasty. Like, it's spicy, but it's tasty. And this time around, I cooked it. He left me another packet, so I cooked it with, like, my favourite crab sticks and meatballs, autumn balls, uh, two eggs, and I thought it was, it was awesome. Like, I think we eat it plain, it's a lot spicier, but we add other stuff to it. It's the correct level of spice. Um, if you eat your mala siang guo, da la, or like the larger, the, the highest amount of spice, then you will like this too. I highly recommend it. If you are a bit scared of spice, it is quite spicy, so be warned. I think if you can eat chili padi on its own, then you'll probably find this is like the right amount of spicy for a good kick. Right, so those are some of my favorites for the month of January 2021. Come and leave it saying that. Drop me a line below. Let me know if there was anything in um, the new year that you discovered or that you recently enjoyed or that you rediscovered. Uh, let me know books, movies, food, um, anything really. Let me know so I can check them out as well. Remember to subscribe. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, it will help me very much and my channel very much. Thank you so much. I will catch you on Facebook and on Instagram. Bye!